IRC's chairman joins me now, and he is uh, Jay Hamra. Jay, thanks for coming in. Let's just talk, let's, uh, talk a little bit about uh, what business has been like. I mean, because the demand from China is insatiable. It must be, you know, so easy for you. It's an exciting place to be at the moment, definitely. We, so we are very pleased we produced our production reports this morning. We are 22% up on our Ilmenite production and 6% If you tell people what Ilmenite is, I have to look it up. <laughs> Ilmenite is a titanium dioxide product. So it's quite an exciting product because it, it is the ultimate producer of uh, reflecting white light. So people need it for paper, packaging, plastics, all the goods you need for industrial growth. So that, along with our iron ore production for steel, is the pure driver for industrial growth in China. Right, well, uh, last time we talked, you said Ilmenite was going through the roof. Does that remain the case? Because there is no market for it, really, is there? I mean, in the sense that there's no trading. It's a very small market. Um, I think what I said for both of our commodities is stronger for longer, is the sort of catchphrase that I, I try to coin. Um, iron ore is a particularly strong commodity, and I think the markets have got it wrong somewhat. If you look at the future for iron ore, definitely it's stronger for longer. You look at the, uh, the demand for the product in China, it is strong, and I don't see any movement in that. I was in mainland China yesterday with one of the biggest importers of, of iron ore, and we were both agreeing over a, a long dinner that uh, India will, will not be an exporter for much longer. I think the production there uh, will be caught up easily by uh, the growth in demand. And you see a, a movement in supply for, for the rest of the parts of the world that people I think have overrated. Jay, I want to just get a view here on, I mean, you, you say all these great things about production, etc., but it's not being translated in your share price. I mean, it's down 18% from this time last year. Now, why do you think that's the case? I mean, I, mean, I could say it's tracking the Hang Seng effectively, but... Yeah, I think, I, I think you're right. We've suffered along with a lot of our Hong Kong companies. Um, we are very proud of what we've delivered. We've delivered on all the promises we made at our, our IPO in October. Uh, 2010 and uh, that means that we delivered on our debt financing, we delivered on our reserve trebling and we moved into profit this year. And, and that I hope is about as much as we can do. We suffer a bit from having a bit of a small free float um, and we suffer from being one of a, a small number of mining companies in Hong Kong. Right. Uh well, looking at that as well, Jay, I mean, you've got uh, right now a 3% move, I've got to say, actually, the pre-market uh, for, for the share price here. But uh, let's just uh, take a look at the finances here. I mean, will you pay a dividend at any time? Um, I think we're at the stage of growth for a mining company where capital growth is more exciting than any yield. So we are building a business that produces about a million tons of iron ore at the moment, should produce in 2014 about 4.5 million tons, um, and then increasing gradually over that time. So. Our capital, which we're getting at good rates at the moment, um, from is, ICBC, I believe. From yes. ICBC, yeah, we've got an 11-year facility from ICBC that we started drawing down in, in December, and I think the most attractive use of that capital is for capital growth. And uh, I think it's K&S, which is your uh, flag, will be your flagship yep. uh, mine. And looking ahead, where are you? When does it come on stream properly? Um, it's, a, it's a long process of construction. We're probably about 70, 80 percent through. Uh, our Chinese contractors have a have a camp now where they'll have about a thousand people on site. Uh, later on this year, we hope to start producing from the plant at the end of 2013. Right, and uh, I think it's Kuranak, is that right? Which yep. is the, it's the our first uh, mine, yeah. that uh, uh, you've been exceeding targets there. And can you give us some guidance on what we can expect? So, iron ore capacity is now at full capacity, which is great, something we're very proud of. Uh, Ilmenite is ramping up. Um, we expect to be at our full production capacity in the second half of this year. Right, uh, let's just also take a look uh, at uh, increased rail costs. Of course, we've seen our fuel prices go up as well. What sort of impact does that have? It's a cost that we have to bear. Uh, in Russia, leasing costs for railway wagons have gone up uh, enormously. Um, fuel costs, particularly around uh, the beginning of the winter period, went up nearly 40%. So that is an impact to our bottom line. Uh, today we produce our production results and we're giving some degree of, of guidance through that for our, our year-end financials. Um, but the important thing is that uh, we hope to increase our, our production, and that means our unit costs decrease. Very quickly, iron ore prices, do you have a target there, and you know, how has it been doing for you? Um, I think iron ore is, is a commodity that is underrated by the uh, commodity analyst community, and uh, stronger for longer, I think, is, is my driver. Okay, uh, in 10 seconds, uh, just wanted to find out one thing about uh, what's going on with China itself. Do you see any signs of a slowdown? I think on some levels of the economy, yes, but in the industrial growth, in, in things like steel production and iron ore consumption, no. Jay, thank you very much indeed. Jay Hambro there from IRC is the chairman of uh, the mining company there.